Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the VRCC, a currently tier 6 9.0 BR wheeled light tank for the Italian ground tech tree. This vehicle currently comes in a pack that includes the VRCC, 15 days of premium time, and 2,000 golden eagles, all for the current price of $59.99 USD. That said, in this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about the VRCC, including how it plays, its stats, its strengths, and weaknesses. I'll give some scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I feel this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. That said, if you like this kind of video, please consider subscribing to my channel, but without further ado, let's get into it. Now to start, as always, I'll place the VRCC stats here on the side of the screen. Important stats to know are its armor thickness, speed, and the cannon slash armor pen. And now, for how it plays. In short, the VRCC is a Spanish variant of the Centauro, which means that its gameplay boils down to big gun, great speed, no armor. To that point, the VRCC excels in several things, namely flanking, sniping, and base capping. Though you should always tread lightly when base capping, as control points are almost always a hotbed of enemy activity. This variant of the Centauro is especially good at sniping, however, as it features Gen 2 thermals, of which greatly help to pick out targets at a range. When combined with its excellent 105mm cannon, DM-33, a PFSDS ammunition, and laser rangefinder, you have a recipe for long-range dominance. Sprinkle in the great speed of the VRCC and you can easily reach sniping locations quickly, allowing you to always stay one step ahead of the enemy. Further, the excellent speed of the Centauro will allow you to wreak havoc behind enemy lines, as it will allow you to quickly pick off targets individually by flanking and destroying back lines, though this works best on paved maps, as going off-road, especially in mud, sand, or snow, will greatly reduce your otherwise excellent mobility. Unfortunately, the VRCC is not all rainbows, as it sacrifices armor for its great speed, which means that only MG fire will sometimes have a tough time making it through the hole of this vehicle, with auto cannons being your worst enemy, as they will quickly turn the VRCC into Swiss cheese. Because of this, you have to stay extra aware of your surroundings, as you are unlikely to survive even a single hit, barring a shot to the front that will get partially stopped by its engine, at least on occasion. Otherwise, the VRCC has a classic case of glass cannon syndrome. When you're on a tear, this vehicle is excellent, but if you are constantly finding yourself being outflanked by enemies, especially if you enter in a match that's already started, you will lose a tremendous advantage that the VRCC would otherwise have, and thus should probably switch to sniping. In short, if you've ever played any wheeled high-tier light tank, this is essentially the VRCC, except of course with better thermals at a lower BR. And now for its strengths and weaknesses. For its first strength, it has excellent speed and acceleration. Though it doesn't have even as high of a power to weight ratio as a comparable OF40 MTCA, comparable at least in terms of BR being that the OF40 MTCA is 8.7 BR, the VRCC is incredibly fast due to its wheel design. Now for its second strength, it has a great cannon with upwards of 400 millimeters of armor pen at max. Third, it has Gen 2 thermals. Fourth, it has three LMGs with two mounted on top of the turret, which does help out tremendously when going after lightly armored helicopters. For its fifth strength, while it has poor armor thickness, the turret has a slightly different armor layout compared to the regular Centauro, which helps it slightly to prevent damage to the VRCC. Of course, it's not much, but it does have some spaced armor in terms of hardened steel armor on the outside of the turret. For its sixth strength, it has access to the scouting ability and scout drones due to it being a light tank. Beyond this, it has smoke grenades, a laser warning system, and it also has a laser rangefinder and stabilizer. And finally, the VRCC has, of course, premium RP and SL bonuses. And now for its weaknesses. First, it has very little armor to the point that HMGs can pretty reliably pen the sides and rear of the vehicle. Second, the VRCC is fairly large, making it an easy target despite its speed. Third, because the VRCC is wheeled, it takes a large penalty in mobility when crossing rough terrain such as mud and snow. Now for its fourth weakness, it has a mediocre cannon depression of only 6 degrees. And finally, it loses its stabilizer around 75 kilometers per hour, which believe it or not, you will reach pretty easily, especially on a paved map. And now for some scores. For its armament, I give the VRCC an 8 out of 10. 
At 9.0 PR, this vehicle's 105mm cannon is excellent, especially when equipped with its DM33 ammunition, of which can shoot through over 400mm of armor at max, and realistically speaking, you are almost always going to be using the DM33 ammunition. While this ammunition is not unique to the VRCC at this BR, as the Ruacat 105 for the British has the DM33 shell at 8.7 BR, it still functions excellently with the VRCC and is extremely up-tierable. Aside from the DM33 shell, the VRCC also features HESH, HEAT-FS, smoke shells, and even the lesser M735 APF SDS shell, if you want to use that for whatever reason. While not perfect, especially considering that it has a middling reload speed of around 8.7 seconds at worst that it can ill afford, especially with enemies nearby, the 105mm cannon on the VRCC is one that can see you win any fight that you might ever get into with this vehicle, and at nearly any range. Now for mobility, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. The VRCC is one of the most mobile vehicles in War Thunder, even despite the fact that it only has a power to weight ratio of 18.6 horsepower per ton, which is, believe it or not, the same as the VK3002M. It can hit a top speed of 110 km per hour, of which it can hit over 70 km per hour with relative ease, all while maintaining decent control and maneuverability. On city maps where the VRCC will almost always perform best, you can zip around from hot zone to hot zone, flanking and spanking as you go. Off-road, however, especially in mud, snow, and sand, the VRCC suffers from the same poor mobility as other wheeled vehicles, and will slow down substantially. Regardless, if you can manage to stay on either hard dirt, rough paths, or best of all paved roads, the VRCC will be one of the most mobile vehicles in War Thunder likely forever. Now for survivability, I give this a 2.5 out of 10. As you can expect, the VRCC has little to no survivability. While it benefits just a bit from having an additional 5mm armor plate on the front of the vehicle, as well as some additional armor on the turret and in a few other areas, the VRCC will be killed by nearly anything in-game with ease. The only thing that the VRCC can stop will be MGs, at least from the front and part of the back, with the HMGs being able to pen the side of the VRCC with ease. Aside from that, the only positive things that can be said about the VRCC in terms of survivability are that it is a large, fairly spacious tank, that it has smoke grenades, and that the engine sometimes helps to stop or lessen damage to the interior. Otherwise, the VRCC has effectively zero armor. Now overall, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. The VRCC, when forgetting survivability, is an amazingly powerful vehicle. If it isn't hit by the enemy, you can freely either snipe or flank enemies, as the DM-33 shell will typically pen and every vehicle that you come into contact with. When remembering survivability, you realize that this is a glass cannon and one that can be quite temperamental. It is a streaky vehicle that is unforgiving, which is good for good players, but of course not good for bad players. In all, a 6.5 out of 10 is still great, but the survivability plus the fact that the Ruocat 105 is basically just as good, but at 8.7 BR and still with thermals, although they are Gen 1, mean that the VRCC is not absolutely outstanding despite still being being pretty great. Now for my recommendation. In short, I really like the VRCC and feel that it has potential, but much like every other vehicle with little to no armor, it will be hit or miss, lacking any ability to take damage, thus making it so that you can only screw up in a match once. I can recommend this vehicle, but have to put a caveat in here that I feel that the 8.7 BR Ruacat 105 is slightly better at 8.7 BR than the VRCC is at 9.0 BR. Again, this is by no means an indictment of the VRCC, but the Ruacat 105 may be more forgiving. Additionally, like other high-tier lightly armored vehicles, this might not be the best vehicle for noobs, so buy this at your own risk. Either way, I'm personally glad that I own the VRCC and feel that it pairs very well with the pre premium 8.7 BR OF40 MTCA. The VRCC is a great vehicle, but it can also lead to great frustration, if only because it has as much armor as a 1995 Honda Civic. Now with that said, thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know what you guys think about this vehicle and the review in the comments below. And of course, as always, please consider subscribing because that means the world to me. Either way though, thanks again guys, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.